Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Li Mao Zhang, assistant professor from Nanyang Technological uh, University in Singapore. So <coughs> the topic of this presentation will be about the beam logging mining. I think this may be the first time you heard about the beam logging mining concept. So I hope I can give you, satisfy you and uh, give you more understanding about this concept. And the work is mainly done uh, when I was a postdoc at the Georgia Tech uh, with my advisor. Dr. Babaka Shuri, and I moved to NTU uh, last December. So, and in this presentation, I will share with you uh, some preliminary results uh, in this conference paper, as well as some uh, continuous results uh, beyond this conference paper. So the main objective is to monitor and measure the design productivity through the process mining of the beam logo data. Okay, so here's an example. So. I think everyone has experience for uh, buying something from Amazon. So when you uh, finish your payment, the Amazon will give you some recommendation, right? And the most times you can see this recommendation is correct. Have you ever considered why, what's the secret, why Amazon is so smart? Actually, the main secret lies in the local data. So the Amazon actually will record all these kind of the, the, uh, be, the behaviors from users during the online payment, online shopping and payment. So for example, they can record at which time point you are in this website and how long you will stay in the website and what is the subsequent website you will move to. So all this kind of information will be stored in the format of the local data. And in the BIM design process, there are also this kind of the local data, so they will uh, record the design behaviors at the time uh, when, you do, when you do your uh, design models. And our research idea is to incorporate some process mining technical with the beam log data to help provide some design support and help the, uh, provide some information in the design process. So with the growing applications of being in the industry, a lot of the local data will be generated so far, we have built up a database for the storage of the local data, and the volume is more, more than 20 gigabytes, it's a huge data resources. And the figure here can show you a general framework for the beam-based uh, process mining. So first, we will design some beam uh, models, and then we will uh, use this kind of the local data generated in the design process. Then, so generally, we will focus in this Research we focus on the Revit, so now is the local data will be stored in the uh, dictionary folder of the general file, and then we use some process mining to provide some information to improve the process behavior, and the potential application we mainly focus on the productivity management, automation, uh, automated construction design, and also some like the training and the education. So here I'll give you a sh uh, example. So the video here can show you the workflow of the design commands and their interactions over time. So here the load can show you the specific design task and the moving uh, flow can show you the uh, flow of the design uh, the speed. So you can see some workflow is very fast, some workflow is very slow. So some slow part can act as some in the bottleneck for the whole design process. So, and this kind of the the visualization of design flow can help to identify some design bottleneck and also improve the design process. So for example, we can identify some you know, most frequent design paths for some old designers who have a lot of the design experience for the education of younger designers to help them to uh, improve their design in a very short time. So actually, there is a really a long debate on how to merge the productivity in design uh, since last, the end of last century. So as you can see, in, our construct, in the construction process, there are several metrics that have been proposed. So for example, when you uh, make a wall or build a wall, so we can see, okay, how many square meters you will finish uh, per, per day or per hour for one worker. So it's reasonable. But in the design process, if you say, okay, how many journeys you produce per day or per week for one designer, 
maybe it's unreasonable. Why? Because project is different. Some project is very complex, some project is very simple. So in this kind of sense, and also compared to the construction productivity, the productivity in design will be more complex because the design is a more innovative process. Particularly, there are many kind of the collaborations in the design process across different disciplines, like the architecture, structure, mechanical equipment, this kind of things. So in order to address this issue, we need to find out so what kind of data can be used to monitor and what kind of metric can be used to measure the productivity in the design, particularly in a more efficient and objective manner. So this is our research concern. So here about our research roadmap. So we are greatly motivated by the fact that a lot of design process information will be extracted from some local data. And based on the data, we can perform and conduct some research activities, like the process mining, the social network analysis, and then we can discover some new knowledge regarding the relationship between the design process and the productivity, as well as the social behavior, and to uh, provide some design support for the design process to help some like the collaboration uh, to improve the productivity. So the first step is the data collection. So what, da what kind of data we can use? So, so actually, the figure here can show you an example of the data collection process. So generally, all this kind of the local data will be stored in a time format. So we will use some text mining technical to extract some information related to the design process. Like in this example, we can extract the user ID, the project ID, and also the timestamp and the contents of the design uh, command. So in this procedure, they mainly have about some uh, main uh, sub-steps, including the time harvesting, uh, <coughs> data parsing, and also data cleaning, because they have a lot of noisy. <coughs> the figure here can show you the flow chart of the data organization. As you can see, in a design firm, so there should be a lot of the projects they are running uh, in parallel. And each project, there are several well designers will be involved to working together. And uh, each designer will generate a folder for the storage of the local data, so during the design process. And then this kind of the folder will be uploaded to the system server. So now we can use a general uh, file parser to uh, translate some the root text files into the structured the CSV data file. So the table here can show you an example. So this kind of the uh, structured CSV uh, sample data. So there are many uh, columns. So those columns can represent the information re required for uh, related to this kind of a design process, including the user ID, the project ID, and also timestamp, as well as the concepts of some design commands. So in the last page, we can, I have shown you a time series of the design commands. So maybe you can say, OK, we can propose such kind of a metric. So how many design commands are executed per day or per hour for a specific designer. But actually, in this kind of sense, they also di didn't consider about the, uh, the, the project difference. So some will be uh, really easy, some will be very complex, so it will also look so good. So in this case, in order to uh, suggest this, uh, address this problem, we will identify the patterns of design per process first so these patterns can represent a sequence of the design command within a log session. So it means that sequence of the com design commands will be executed repeatedly. And uh, the main uh, objective is to just to uh, provide a unit basis to merge the productivity and also to eliminate the project difference. difference. Because here the patterns can represent a similar scope of the design process. So this is our assumption. So based on the discovery, the, pat the design uh, pat uh, patterns, we can do a lot of the uh, design analysis. So here is one example. We use it to measure the productivity in design. So the figure here shows you about the top five the design sequence patterns. 
that are mined from the design local data. So as you can see, for each uh, pattern, there are maybe uh, three and four design commands. They are executed in sequence. And here, the figure show you the process duration uh, of the different patterns for specific designers. So some designers will execute the pattern one, two, and uh, four, and five. And the y-axis represents the time, uh, the process duration. So the figure here can show you the final result of the productivity measurement. So as you can see, the blue line shows you the productivity performance of the whole organization. And the, bl the blue point here in the middle is the mean value. It shows you uh, the based the average time required to execute this pattern. And uh, the red point can show you the productive performance of specific designers. So you can see if the red point is on the left side, so on the left side of the uh, blue point, it means he requires less time than the average. So it means his productivity will be higher than the baseline. If the blue point is on the right side of the blue point, it means his productivity is lower than the baseline. So this kind of the, uh, measurement of the productivity in the process. And also, the discovery of patterns can be used as a tool to detect some outlier performers, which require additional attention from the project leaders. So the, ch the figure here can show you the box uh, plot that is summarizing the production rates of different designers in executing the pattern one. So we choose pattern one as an example. And here the designers are represented by uh, A to U. And here the Y axis also represents the process duration. And you can see here, uh, the yellow area represents some might outliers. It's outliers, but also series. But the pink area shows you the extreme outliers. Those kind of the designers will should be paid more and specific attention for the future improvement. So as you can see, the control chart here provides a visual tool to, for the project leader to evaluate and assess the performance of the different designers in the team for benchmark. So, uh, so for the study, the main important is about the validation. So how can we validate the effectiveness of our proposed approach? So here we uh, try to uh, explore whether the learning effect will exist in uh, the beam design process. Because according to the learning theory, we see when our humans do something, the uh, similar things repeatedly, we will be faster and faster. So, and here we also, uh, the figure here can show you the scatter plot and the regression fit of the process. Uh, process. Uh, we take the pattern one example among six designers. So the X axis represents the time scale and the Y axis also represents the process duration. And as you can see, the red line here shows you the, the regression fit. So all the regression fit goes down and the, because of the slope or the negative. So it means the time required to execute the same pattern will be reduced when they execute more and more patterns. So this kind of result will be finally consistent with the learning theory. So to a large extent, the effectiveness of this approach will be testified. So the other is application is to discover the social networks. So here, as you can see in the figure, in the left, you can see how we build this kind of the collaboration. So we assume that if different designers work together in the same project, we will see there should be a kind of the collaboration so when we account all these kind of the collaboration throughout many projects among different designers, we can build up this kind of the social network. So it's very uh, data driven. So, and this data is very easy for our access. So, and here for the social network, the load represents different designers and the link represents there the should be a kind of the collaboration between different designers and the Ys of link can represent the strengths of the cooperation. If the Y is very wide, means they have a lot of strong cooperation. So based on this kind of the discovery social network, we can 
do some measurement in terms of the social behavior. So here the figure can show you the measurement of the node degree centrality, so by the link and also by the weight. So we can identify who is the lead person, so in a central position, and who is the marginal person, so in the outside. So it can provide a visual, uh, visual tool for the project leader to see, okay, who should be potentially is a good position for the, this one to be the leader. So this kind of <coughs> sense. And we also perform some correlation analysis and find some interesting results. So one biggest significant result we find is that we demonstrate nail should be have a, a, a strong and a positive correlation between this kind of the social large characteristic and the typical performance. As you can see in this figure, the X axis represents the, the social, uh, social behaviors, so in terms of the node centrality degree, and the Y axis represents the production performance. So in terms of the regression fit, we, we can find out that the measured load degree centrality can explain more than 50% of the production performance. So this kind of the result we demonstrated using our data captured from the local data. So it, as you can see, as a result, we can find out in the actual practice, we can pull some designers, maybe from the outside, to pull them towards some central position to enable them an environment to help them to build a relationship and make them more social with other designers can will have a big potential to improve the production performance in the design. So this kind of result is we can find out from this kind of empirical study. So for the future study, actually there's a long way to go. So actually our group is the first uh, group to study about the beam local data. So I hope that we can continue. So one specific area is we will try to explore the evolutional mechanism of the learning process from peers. So for example, we can testify whether you can learn faster in a large, large group or in a small group, or whether you will learn first in some collaboration with the old uh, senior people or with the younger people, so this kind of the testing. And we will also try to simulate the design behaviors and try to do some prediction and optimization for our future study. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. So, yeah, thank you. Okay.